Hi. Yeah, it is so good to see all of you and season two. Oh my gosh, bigger, better than ever. I'm so excited for everyone else to see it. Thank you for speaking with me today. Thank you. For Thank you. I loved these characters from season one and Grace. We got way more of you this season, which I was thrilled about. But for each of you, what was it like to explore these characters so much deeper? Because season one, obviously you're introing them, but season two, you come back and you're getting to go further with them. What was one thing you were excited to explore? Uh, I think I was really excited to explore Zoya's relationship with Shan and her actually getting a best friend and getting to experience that and and have the good chaos, I guess, as as, as Grace would would call it. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think for me, um, Shan was already just a character that like, with like really chaotic and over the place characters, it can be really easy to just be like, they, their motivation is chaos. But like, I think it was really fun to find the heart within her and be like, she's not like an idea of a person, she's a person. So like, there's a reason why she's attached. There's a reason why she does those things so that in those moments where she can no longer be detached, like you kind of see like how much it shakes her and how much like you're like, oh, you act like you don't care because when you care, you care a lot. And like that was really fun to explore. Wow, that's re- that's a beautiful way of saying that's that. That's such such a true thing. I feel like so many. People- I love I love Shandown. I always say like I will protect her with everything. That is my baby. Same, 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 same. <laughs> I really I I wanted to see Obi kind of come into his own and and uh, you know I mean I think he was so intrinsically lost for a long time and and it caused him to mistreat a lot of people but i really i don't think that oh no it's starting to come down um i don't think that obi is a bad person though i think he really was i'm gonna go inside this is about to get crazy uh he's just lost though yeah i think he's just you know coming into his own and it's and it's interesting and exciting to see how grow how obi grows and develops and and I, I mean, I, it's just as bit, it's just as every bit interesting for me as it is for the audience. I think, like I, you know, I read these scripts and I'm like, oh, well, Obi did that. Obi's doing this. You know, it's 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 a treat yeah. to get to know him. And you kind of led me into our next question because there was so many times this season where my jaw was just dropped with the with the plot twist going on. So I can't imagine reading the script for each of you. Can you tease for me? the moment that made your jaws drop in the new season? Well, I I will say episode four was a huge curveball and I'll let everybody else figure out what that means as the show comes out. But that was, yeah, that was unprecedented. Yeah, I think <laughs> so episode four to, for me too, because episode four, like there's a couple episodes that feel like build up and then this is the payoff. And episode yes. four is definitely like a build up and this is the payoff. So that went, like reading the script, I had a visceral like, oh, oh, oh my God. Yeah. And then like, watching it, cause there's also like certain scenes that like when you read it, you're just like, it's a quick stage direction. You're like, okay, and you read it. Mm-hmm. And then you watch it and you're like, y'all were doing that? <laughs> oh my goodness. Like right in front of all of our salads. That's crazy. <laughs> Grace, I love you. I love you. <laughs> you are like. <laughs> This grouping. Oh my gosh, I'm living. <laughs> um, I think episode four. Um, but also honestly, I think the biggest jaw drop of it all was the finale. And I'm sorry that it's the the last episode. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have to just watch. But seriously, what happens in the in the finale is so crazy, nobody's gonna see it coming. And I can't emphasize that enough. You had to tease me. I only got the first five episodes. Get them. Come on. I'm I did not sure that you, you get them, Sophia. Don't worry. I had to throw them. You, know? you guys got to get me the finale. I don't know. We're going to get it. And then we're going to re- reconvene just like we that. don't even have it. So oh, you don't even have it. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, we don't even so you haven't seen anything that comes up. Like, you've read it. You've done it. But you haven't seen the final product yet. Not really, yeah. no. Well, that I is the it. best part. Because it's like, like, my I always say my favorite episodes are episode six and seven and like I'm not actually in them but reading them I was like oh, oh. 
<laughs> so I'm like so excited to see what they do because I was really sad. Like my roommate would check in being like, why are you yelling? I'm like, girl, come read this, come read this. And she, I'll be like, girl, I'm not even in this, but it's good. <laughs> All right, we need to regroup after after the season comes out. I'm holding you guys to that, but thank you guys so much for talking to me. Can't wait for everyone else to see it. And I did not realize how many crazy things happened in episode four. Now that I'm remembering, yeah. everything yeah. goes down in that episode. Huh? Yeah. Crazy. Thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. I spoke with you all at the season premiere red carpet last year. So, oh. so wonderful to speak with you guys again, season two. You too. Good to see you again. How are you? Good. And I just finished binging the first five episodes of this season and I'm on the edge of my seat waiting for more. But the relationship between your characters is such a huge part of those episodes. And I loved every second of it. So what do you think each of your characters sort of brings to the relationship? Because they all complement each other so well. I think that um, like, I think that Audrey kind of the only female um uh, audrey is <laughs> she brings <laughs> I, yeah audrey brings uh, um anyway i think that audrey kind of it, it's it's it'd probably be hard like i think it's really hard uh with her she's very type a like it, she kind of like needs things in order and she stresses out a lot she's a pretty neurotic person um so i think that that Thomas and Evan or Aki and Max kind of compliment her because they're able to just like where they are in their energy is kind of like a Aki is very like um, down to earth and kind of brings her down to earth and and Thomas like supports her crazy rapid fire ideas and so it's kind of beautiful because they mix in that way like um, a lot of people wouldn't be able to put up with well, I think people would be able to put up with Aki. He's pretty easy to be around, but at least me and Max, like it's pretty hard to, to match our energy in real life as well. Um, so I think that they were all good for each other in that way. Yeah, definitely. And I think Audrey gives Max some like structure mm -hmm. and Aki gives Max a sense of like morality. <laughs> he, Aki is kind of like Max's moral compass. Um, I feel like not too many similarities, but I think we're all so different. But I, I think that's why it works. Yeah. Um, we all bring something special to the table that um, you couldn't get anywhere else. So I think um, it's kind of a balance of opposites kind of thing. So yeah. it works out. Season two is just bigger and better than season one was. I mean, we're delving deeper into the characters. Is there something you could tease that you were really excited to personally explore with your individual characters? I'm excited to... Um... I'm excited to explore with, with Audrey. Um, I'm excited to explore like how um, how she's kind of she's always kind of put up with a lot of the in the first season. You see her kind of going through the drama and kind of being um, Julian's uh, like uh, backbone or Julian's like uh, pillow to fall on. Is that like an analogy? I don't know. Um, but instead of or punching bag. But I, I think that in this season, like she kind of realizes that uh, there's only so much she can put up with in that area and things still keep on happening to Julian all the fucking time. So I think at some point she kind of has to see like, I think her boyfriends also help her like take a step back and realize like um, we got our own shit going on here. So maybe you should just like not be so involved. So I think that I get to explore different alleys of, um of of life and she learns a lot more this season for sure yeah i think it's really exciting for to be playing a character that has so frequently been in control of the narrative that he's like putting out into the world and the way that the world sees him and now here's a time where he can't do that and he has to be vulnerable and has to be open and exposed to this these other two people uh, and that's really scary for him uh, and I think everyone in their everyday lives experiences the same kind of putting up walls and so an opportunity to kind of take them down and to like feel out of your comfort zone is is, is interesting to, to experience and to uh, discover and investigate. I'm just um, excited to explore just how Aki wants to operate. I think he's 
he's just figuring life out. I mean, he's a he's a kid. He's going through school. He's now in a triad. Um, he's just learning a lot, a lot of information, and I kind of apply that to my real life. And I learned so much in those years, and my outlook then was is so different now. So it's just like, yeah, every year just becomes more and more information of things you want to know and things you don't want to know. But he's figuring. Mm-hmm. It out. Thank you all so much for your time. Huge congrats on season two. And I can't wait for everyone else to see you. Thank you. Thanks, Sophia. Have a nice day. You as well. Thank you. Hi, Savannah. Hi, Zion. Sophia Uh Soto with the Nerds of Color. And first of all, I'm so beyond excited to speak with both of you. You two are so fabulous in the show. Thank you. you. There is nothing like the dynamic between your characters and the fans love the two of you. So what has it been like to see that response? And what can you tease about what's next for them this season? I mean, the response is always, you know, a positive response is always um, amazing and really encouraging. It's part of what makes us want to continue and want to do, you know, the best that we can. Um, so, yeah, that's that's amazing. Also, um, I got on, you know, I'm on Twitter. I've been on Twitter and now I'm obsessed. So, and the show is big on Twitter, so it's fun to see everything. But, um, yeah, what can I tease about season two? Uh, it's pretty action-packed, I would say. Uh, there, there's some cat fights, which is, you know, kind of echoes the original, which I think people were asking for. So they're going to like that. Yeah, I think, um, I think we can safely, I can safely say that we're the fan favorites. And so yes, you fun. are. <laughs> that just, you know, feels really nice that we're able to impact people in such a way that they're able to see themselves in us and then showcase such love towards us. Um, it's always better than the alternative, you know? So, um, and then tease for this season, um, I'd say you get to see, uh, Luna's more vulnerable side and you get to see layers to who she is. And, um, that's just really exciting. You get to see why she is the way that she is. Um, there's also like really cute moments with Max and Luna and Monet and Luna and, Yeah, I'm just excited for people to see that. When season one came out, it was so refreshing to see the call for more of the two of you. You know, to have such drive when it comes to characters is so beautiful. And, you know, this season, we do get to see more of you, which I was grateful for. But what has been the most rewarding part of portraying these characters? I mean, last time we spoke, we spoke about representation, but now it's out there in the world and people are feeling seen. I I imagine it's a whole different feeling. Yeah, it's, um, it's really rewarding. I mean, to, to hear the support and to hear the words of, of gratitude that people have for the representation that both of us are, are being able to bring on, onto the screen. Um, and it is nice that we're kind of over that barrier, you know, and we're able to kind of show different facets of who we are. Um, yeah, like you get to really see um, Luna's, Latina, Latin American side, which is really nice. And it's really important to me as a Latina woman to be able to showcase that. You see her speaking in Spanish. Um, so, you know, it's, it's nice to, to add layers to, to these kind of iconic, never been done before characters. Yeah, yeah, it's an incredible feeling. I mean, yeah, before, um, you know, before it was out in the world, um, I was just, I had an overwhelming feeling of excitement um, that I got to be part of that representation. Um, you know, the representation that I that I needed and, and, and need, um, and I think is necessary. So to be a part of it um, directly is just incredibly fulfilling. Um, and yeah, now that it's out, um, it's just amplified that feeling for me. Um, to see, you know, like Zion said, to see the response from people that it really is um, connecting with people uh, is, yeah, it's, I'm grateful. I'm very, very grateful. I loved what I've seen of season two so far. I can't wait for everyone else to see it. And for me to see the rest, I'm on the edge of my seat. Thank you both so much for your time today and just congrats on everything. Thank you you so much. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Yes, so. Sophia Soto with the Nerds of Color. And first off, I am so excited to speak with you about this new season. I got to cover season one and this season is just bigger and better than ever. Um, so I have to start with asking about Georgina Sparks' big return. I sure. mean, obviously that was such a big deal. How did that come about? Can you tell me what that conversation was like? And does she have any 
possible updates on our other OG favorites? Yes. Yeah, so I knew as soon as I was even going to do the new version of the show that I wanted Georgina to come back at some point. And Michelle and I have stayed in touch over the years. And the second it was announced, she like DM me. She's like, okay, I'm, I'm in. When am I coming? And I was like, well, actually, Michelle, you know, Georgina makes the maximum amount of damage. So we actually need the longest runway to set up the most so that could happen. And she was like, absolutely. She was never like, no, I have to come in tomorrow. She was, she, you know, Michelle's amazing and she totally understands the character. And she's like, great, I'll see you in season two. But I was like, I'm going to put Milo in season one. And we had to get her approval, obviously, for the images you see of Georgina in season one on the wall with Putin and with Elon Musk. Um, and so, uh, she was like all in. And so we knew that in season two, she was going to come and create the most havoc. And the fun was, and it's so funny, you're the first person to ask this, um, not only, of course, having Georgina is great, but what has Georgina actually been doing involving the original characters since the original? Well, you hear pretty quickly. And it's one of my favorite things Georgina has ever said slash done in all shows is something that you hear in the very first scene that she's in that I take particular pride in. So you will learn about a lot of the original characters and what has been happening between them and Georgina. What a tease. I'm on the edge of my seat right now. Oh my gosh. You're going to like it. I, pr I promise. Really I'm so excited. I think I may have ignored, I think I may have ignored the finale because I'm pretty sure in season six, Georgina kind of became friendly with them. Let's pretend that didn't happen. I think that's what we're going to have to pretend. We can throw it away. It's okay. Anything in the name of chaos, right? Exactly. I mean. <laughs> sure. And one thing I really love about this show is the different dynamics and relationships. I think they're all so fresh. What are you most excited for fans to see develop or explored in this new season with these characters? Um, so I really love like one of the great things that any teen show allows you is the fact that teenagers often fall away from each other and into new groups at all times. Yeah. And so season two, season one, we spent a lot of time with Julian and Zoya. Season two, we spend less time with them because I feel like they're in a pretty good place when the story begins. Some stuff happens later on in the season that, that puts them together, not necessarily together, but at odds. But I was really excited this year to explore deeper Julian and Audrey's friendship because we knew that they were best friends when the show began, but we never really had the time because Gossip Girl came out and caused chaos. So there's, I really am excited to delve into Julian and Audrey. I'm very excited to delve into Zoya and Shan. I love Grace who plays Shan. I think Shan is such an amazing character and the dynamic between them and their story is really great. Obviously the triad, really love spending more time with them, going deeper with them. And then, you know, Obi, I just think we got deeper with all the characters, but Obi and his family, some major stuff happens midway through this season that's actually very dark and ends up including every single character in it, much sort of like Julian's scandal in the first season with her father so um i really love that and then of course i have to say monet and luna just coming out of the sidelines which was always the plan way back in season one episode five monet is like i'm done with you julian you do not deserve this and i'm going to find somebody who does and that person is her it's been planned from the very beginning so much like a long gestating marvel character that's going to become a super villain the the monet achieving that with with luna not necessarily at her side um some really major stuff happens with luna in the rest of season two i don't know if you've quite gotten to that yet uh but yeah i just named every relationship in the show and then of course the teachers kind of getting off their high horse and becoming just as evil as any gossip girl ever could be i think is also great so i'm just I loved it all. I loved going further. We just, we just, yeah. you know, we just kept going further and further. So you did name so many of my favorite dynamics there. So <laughs> there, there's so many favorites. You can't just pick one. It's such a valid, yeah, such sure. a valid thing. What is it like seeing the fan response and seeing how much the characters are resonating with the audiences already? I really love that. It's so, it's so lovely. Like I think a show like Gossip Girl, it, and and I want to sort of like you know shit on anyone else's shows because I uh, every show is important and great for the people making it. So I can only speak for myself, which is I really do approach Gossip Girl, both the original and this one. I know Josh and Stephanie feel the same with this Shakespearean reverence. Like this world is bigger than just a teen soap. These characters actually are um, tropes through time. Like I remember telling Stephanie, I think I talked about this in season one a little bit. Um, I was so nervous. I was like, at a certain point, I was like, wait, Max is kind of like Chuck and Audrey is kind of like Blair like and I didn't I tried not to do that but it happened anyway and she was like that was Cecily's genius is that these characters these archetypes exist through time always she saw them from Shakespeare to now and and so you're just seeing the next evolution of them and then once I had that I like let go and what I love about it is I just think these characters are are mythic 
I, and I love, and I, and I'm very grateful to them for that. I don't even claim that. I think that it's the writers, it's the actors coming in and finding that and, and bringing them to life in whole new ways that we never realized. It's an incredibly talented ensemble of actors. Our casting director, Cassandra Kulakundis, I'm very grateful to know her. She does literally Paul Thomas Anderson movies and Gossip Girl. Like there is, that sounds like it's not a Venn diagram, but it is because the level of actor is off the charts. And so when you have that level of talent that also treats the material like it's ex like great theater it allows you to go deeper and bigger and so i don't think of gossip girls like this teen guilty pleasure show at all i actually think of it as worthy as succession in terms of what it's looking at the dy dynamics between young people and what it's like to like live under the pressure of privilege and whether that should even be a pressure because it's a fucking you know you're so lucky that you have that sorry for my language again it still is a lot of pressure um and so yeah i don't know i just time, time from time immemorial the have and have nots has been a story we look at all the time i'm just very grateful to have spent 15 years in this one pocket of it Joshua, thank you so much for your time. I'm grateful. Awesome. And huge congrats on the second season. I can't wait for the rest of the world to see it. Thank you, Sue. Professional artists and professors. Maybe a nerd who's just like you. Talking about the things that you like too. So I invite you to the NOC. In full color, you see me. The hard knock life. Comics, movies, and TV. Yeah. Pop culture with a different perspective. Watch it on your screen. Hit play.